Well, ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm a little bit late to the party, but I was supposed to be actually uploaded about 90 minutes ago, but it just didn't happen. It's okay. We know now, what we know now is that this week in indoor football, you have to determine that the IFL champions have indeed become new IFL champions. They are new IFL champions. You may have heard of them. The Massachusetts Pirates. Yes. The Pirates beat the MVP. Drew Powell, Kevin Guy, the head coach of the year. You know, that, that Arizona Rattlers team that everybody's been hyping up as, you know, one of the best ever. You know, a team that could finally win a home game for a championship. And that didn't happen. That didn't happen. The Pirates were able to muster up enough defense and walk off with a game-winning field goal in overtime to win this game. What a great game it was. Drew Powell fumbled the game away, essentially, by making that fatal mistake by fumbling at the end. Yeah, there was a little bit of ref ball with the weird pick play or whatever I think it was called or rather like a legal substitution or something like that I forgot what it was but it was a weird there was a weird sequence where it wasn't really you know there wasn't really anything happening and yet there was a penalty called anyway I forgot what it was somebody's gonna have to remind me because it, it's been it's been a couple hours since this all the game so I don't remember the penalty off the top of my head but congratulations to the pirates they moved in from the NAL and a lot of people, especially NAL fans, said, no, the Pirates ain't going to do nothing. They're not going to do anything in the IFL. And here they are. They're no punching bag no more. They are legit. Benefield, Alejandro Benefield, and that, and that, and that Pirates D made sure of it. Congrat again, congratulations to the Pirates, your first idol, and... Hopefully you get to defend it very, very well next year. Um, what we do know, some other things have happened for the IFL. We do know that there will be at least two divisions. Now, Todd Tyron has said that there might be four eventually, but I personally don't hope we get that far. Do Let's not go that far with the whole four divisions thing. But there will be a Midwest and Western-based divisions. Of course, the divisions are pretty much cut and dry. Um, as long, and again, as long as Arizona doesn't have to play, you know, the Naz Wranglers four times a year, or Tucson four times a year, or Duke City four times a year, or the San Diego Strike Force four times a year, or something like that. As long as Arizona plays teams maybe like once or twice. Or, I'm just using Arizona as an example. As long as teams play like once or twice instead of three times or maybe four times, there's no reason for teams to be playing three or four times a year when there's more teams in the league. It doesn't make any sense. This is not the NAL, okay? Uh, but there will be, you know, Midwestern and Western based divisions. Again, they're already, they're pretty much already shaped out. It, it's just how, how, we're, how we're going to see what they're going to do. A little bit more expansion should be coming. Who knows? I've heard rumors of an Eastern-based team being explored, but that's really it as far as expansion goes. We do know that there are technically 17 teams, but we still don't know the status of Cedar Rapids. We still don't technically know unless there is something it's been rumored all season long that Cedar Rapids is dead. So, you know, they probably are dead. They, they probably are, but you never know. You never really know until you know. Until that schedule comes out, you never know. Um, and Quad City, they have announced their return. They said on Saturday that they will be coming back to the IFL. So there you have it with that. And moving on real quick to the CIF. The Topeka Tropics. Yes, that is right. That is what the name of the new Topeka team will be in Topeka, Kansas. They'll be playing somewhere in Topeka, but I mean, it, it's an interesting name. I'll tell you that right now. What a name that that, that embraces, you know, the, the, 
the nature of what indoor football is. Just a name that doesn't make any sense. And it's the type of thing that brings you publicity. It's the type of thing that keeps you out there for a while. So hoping for success with the Tropics. Um, speaking of the CIF, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what their team situation is. They're at an awkward 13-team setup right now, and that could potentially be cut to 10 because we still don't know the status of the Texas and Oklahoma teams. Again, unless unless the schedules are put out there really, really quickly, there there's no, there's nothing that we can say. Nothing that anybody can say right now until those schedules are put out and until somebody says something. So, CIF is at a comfortable 13 teams. IFL is at 17 currently until somebody says something. Until a schedule is released and somebody says something, we don't know. And, you know, there's also a rumor, real quick, going back to the IFL real quick, the West Texas Buccaneers. They think... They want to join the IFL. They've linked the IFL website to their Twitter, and they privated their Twitter. So it doesn't it doesn't actually really add up very well because the IFL is trying to focus east. So again, there should there may be another East Coast team out there somewhere to get mass cheats off that island of where they are. But who knows? Right now, we don't know. And. But West Texas trying to say that they are going to the IFL doesn't make a lot of sense because for starters, they weren't competitive in the AAL. And they pretty much did not finish the season in 2021 because they kept losing and they kept losing and forfeiting games. And they keep playing teams that aren't real teams, like the Waco Tornadoes or whatever they're called, or in horrid, horrid conditions. We're talking worse conditions than the Berg Defenders. So, I don't know what the West Texas Buccaneers situation is, but that's all we know. That's all we know is that they've linked the IFL website to their Twitter, they've privated their Twitter, and there's nothing on any other social medias or anything like that, so it could all mean nothing at the end of the day. And last but not least, the NAL, and speaking of the NAL, speaking of expansion for the NAL, the Albany Empire owners have taken, you know, the trademark for the Washington Valor and Baltimore Brigade, and it seems like they're trying to get those trademarks. Remember, San Antonio Valor's owner John Cardenas is now in jail because he is a fraud, he is a thief, and you know the Valor were a fraudulent team where players weren't getting paid, and the Valor never really had anything to do. The, the, the San Antonio Valor had never had anything to do with the Washington Valor, so that so they just straight up stole the Valor name. Just just typical 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 shadiness in this sport. So, um, but it seems like the Empire are trying to do it right, you know, trying to do it nice and right, and that could mean something for the NAL. Again, there's been a lot of cities being rumored. For where the NF, where the NAL is expanding to next, because they need teams and they need teams fast. So who knows what happens there? And again, that, that's pretty much it for this week. And f for all intents and purposes, this is it for this year. And I'm glad all of y'all decided to stick with me for the ride. I mean, of course, I get information wrong all the time, so um, I just find the source, go get the source, talk about the source, get my opinion on it, and then other people start to comment in the comment section about it, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it is what it is with that, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for every second of y'all just coming to the channel and subscribing, because um, there was not this many people you know here several months ago when this started and I'm glad it is so I'm happy you know hopefully we hopefully I stick around long enough to get to you know another year in 2022 so we can go at this again you know in either February or March it depends again on what schedules are going to be out so I am really really happy where we are right now with this week in indoor football and I'm glad to close the book on this year with a 
fantastic, fantastic game. And we're going to have plenty more of fantastic games next season. I can guarantee you that. More surprise, more intrigue, all sorts of, you know, bizarre, weird, crazy messed up stories in the world of indoor and arena football that that's just what this sport is you know I, I can't wait I can't wait so with that being said everybody I will see you all next month in regards to indoor football in any way with the monthly updates from now until whenever the season starts y'all take care everybody I'll see you tomorrow for that NFL recap. Peace.